Okay, so now we've created our first Xcode project and we've compiled it and we've kind of run a blank iPhone application. Now let's take a look at what some of the files in your Xcode project are and I'll explain what they do and kind of what, what happens when you're running that application. So let's take a look at the project that we created in the previous video, the blank demo. And I just want to go through some of the files in your default Xcode project and explain to you what they are and how they're represented in the blank app that when you run, you, know, you see this gray screen. So there you go. We have one view, one blank view. And basically, how does it even get to this point? And you know, what do these files mean? So if you don't have a programming background, try to pay close attention in this video because I will also be trying to explain some object oriented programming concepts to you while explaining what these files are. So first of all, I want to point out that in here you see a file called app delegate, but there's one with a .h extension and one with a .m extension. And same thing with view controller. And then we've just got this really weird view controller zip file which we'll get to in a second. So, you know, why are there two files with different extensions with the same name? Well, in Objective C, these two files, the .h and the .m, they make up a class. Now, you can think of a class as a blueprint. So in a class, using Objective-C, we write instructions for how that class is supposed to behave and its properties and behaviors. And using this class, you can create instances. And these instances are referred to as objects. So using one blueprint or one class, you can create multiple objects and all of them behave the same way. So for example, uh, right here, we have an app delegate class. It contains .h and .m file, which I'll explain in a second why they're two files. But here is another class, the view controller. So uh, in view controller, there's a little bit of code that describes how it's supposed to behave. And you'll notice that in app delegate, it creates an instance of view controller to use. What's important to understand is that when we write code in Xcode, we're filling in the code and instructions for these classes. And really that, that's what we're doing. We're creating new classes and we're defining the classes, instructions and behaviors. And then what we do is uh, we create instances of these classes called objects and it's these objects that interact with each other. So it's a very abstract concept at this point, but once we you know, start coding and get our feet wet, it's gonna start to make more sense. But it's a very important distinction I wanna make right here is that we define classes and we write instructions and behaviors and properties for those classes and to define how it's supposed to behave. And then we use these classes to create instances of objects which will interact with each other. So following the blueprint analogy, if the blueprint is for a car, the class is the blueprint because it describes all, you know, how the car works and how it's put together and everything. The actual car that's made from the blueprint, you know, acts accordingly to the blueprint, but it is not the blueprint. And using uh, the blueprint, you can create multiple copies of that car. So this is why it's called object oriented programming because really we're defining classes that we're going to use to create objects and it's really the objects that are interacting with each other to make the whole app experience happen. So now that you know about classes and objects, going back to that blank gray screen default iPhone app that we created, how do these files in your Xcode project translate to that application. Well, if you take a look at this diagram, you can see how the app delegate class, the view controller class, and the view controller.zip view come together to form that default gray screen application that you saw in the simulator in the beginning of this video. So the app delegate is kind of like your entry point to the application itself. And in the app delegate object, it creates a view controller object. Now you remember, this is not the view controller class, it's an instance of the view controller class. And so the view controller object then goes to create a view controller view. And this is translated from the view controller.zip file. And when these three things work together, you have that application that you ran. If you click the view controller.zip file in Xcode, your editor area is going to change into interface builder. So what this is, 
is it's a visual designer for you to design your iPhone views. So as you can see, all I have right now is a blank screen, which is exactly what you get when you run the iPhone simulator. So with this visual designer, I can actually drag labels and buttons and so on onto the view in a visual way, and I can customize the properties of those elements. Now the same thing can be done programmatically in Objective-C. I can create all of those labels and text boxes within code, and then using code, add them to the view as well. But Interface Builder and the zip files is just the visual way for you to construct your user interfaces in your views. And then when you run your application, the zip file gets translated into a view object for your view controller class to manage. So the last topic I want to talk about before we end this video is where do objects live? We talked about what classes are and how you can use a class to create multiple instances of that class called objects. So where do objects live? So when you create an object, it gets created in memory. You can think of memory as sort of an abstract space to store and keep track of all of your objects. And the memory space is not persistent. So what that means is that as you're creating these objects in memory, if you're your app is stopped or it crashes or your the phone is shut off and then turned back on that memory space is flushed meaning that you're gonna lose all of your data so if you wanted to um, save any data um, you'd have to persist it somehow and we'll get into that topic in the future but for now uh, understand that all of the objects that get created in the application um, they live in in a space called memory and furthermore, your iPhone app or your iPad app is only allotted a certain amount of memory. So that means if you keep creating objects without removing objects from memory, you're eventually going to run out of space in memory and your iPhone app may crash. So a long time ago, programmers would need to manage their own memory and they would need to keep track of which objects were still being used, so they need to keep it in memory, and which objects were no longer needed, and then they would manually have to release or flush those objects from memory. And then because of this amount of control that programmers had, it was very easy to create bugs where either memory would overflow or objects wouldn't get removed from memory and they would get stranded and stuff like that. So if you remember in the beginning of the project, we checked off a check mark called automatic reference counting. Well, what that does is Xcode will actually automatically add those statements to remove objects which are no longer used and help you kind of manage that memory a little bit so you don't have to manually keep track and remove objects that are no longer needed. So I think this is a great place to end off this video. It was a little longer than the previous videos, but we went through a lot of important concepts uh, in this video. So I want to recap what we went through today here. So we talked about what some of the default class files in your Xcode project are. We also went through the distinction between what a class is in programming and what an object is and it's very important to understand this concept. And we also talked about the app flow in your default iPhone app and in fact in all your iPhone apps uh, the entry point will be the app delegate and then you will create some sort of view controller um, to display a view. So um, that app flow kind of pertains to all of the feature apps that you're going to build. We talked about what zip files were and what views were and Interface Builder uh, introduced a little bit. And we're going to be using Interface Builder in our Hello World video in the next lesson. Uh, we also talked about uh, memory and where objects live. So if you didn't get all of that, don't worry. Follow the link below in the description for the notes and there's actually a text version of this video as well and you can ask questions in the comments and then I'll create an FAQ section or you can ask questions in the comments below of this video on YouTube and I will also answer the questions there. So I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Uh, it would really help me out if you guys shared this with uh, your friends and family, whoever you know who wants to learn iOS programming and like and subscribe. So thanks for all of your support and next video coming up. Thanks, guys. Bye.